uh, we were uh, friends we were work, um, uh, discussing uh, cooling tower uh, which is a <coughs> direct contact heat exchanger and as I have told psychrometry is very important and in a cooling tower we can theoretically get a cold water temperature as low as wet bulb temperature. So, basically it is like this uh, if we see that C w t is greater than equal to uh, greater than equal to or rather let us put it in slightly different manner. It is like this we can put it in a slightly different manner. Let us say dry bulb temperature d v t is greater than equal to <coughs> uh, cold water temperature in a cooling tower and cold water temperature is greater than equal to wet bulb temperature. So, that means cold water temperature will be in between your dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature and this difference we are calling as approach. So, with this let us go back to our uh, slide and what we want to do that little bit of air water vapor <coughs> uh, mixture thermodynamics these are all known things I have given this only for a recapitulation. So, here we have defined the humidity ratio and humidity ratio one can get in terms of <coughs> partial uh, uh, pressure of uh, vapor and uh, pressure of air. So, with this relationship any book of thermodynamics will give you I am not spending time on this. Now, let us say we are uh, doing a steady state steady flow model of a cooling tower. So, <coughs> you can go through this one I will again not explain much, but what we can see that um, <coughs> hot water is entering here cold water is going out similarly cold air is coming in and hot hot air is going out hot and humid air we should say hot and humid air is going out. Now, uh, conservation of mass for dry air. So, <coughs> psychrometry I would uh, request all of you to go through psychrometry. So, in psychrometry we are considering air water vapor mixture, but in that dry air quantity that remains constant. So, in certain quantity of dry air the amount of water vapor that goes on changing. So, most of the properties or all the prop almost all the properties of moist air or air water vapor mixture is defined based on the mass of the dry air. <coughs> so, this is also one important thing you have to keep it in mind and dry air quantity through the cooling tower that remains constant. Then conservation of mass of water. So, <coughs> what is there that uh, water uh, water is coming in along with uh, air some amount of water vapor is coming in. Then water is going out and along with uh, <coughs> Uh, along with um, uh, air some amount of water vapor is going out. So, this is the con conservation of water generally very small amount of water is evaporated. So, the amount of water that is evaporated it has got really very negligible effect on the total mass flow rate of water, but it has got a very significant effect in the heat and mass transfer. So, for air side this has got significance. Then first law of an <coughs> analysis this is also very uh, I mean sim I mean easy to understand that water there will be change in temperature because hot water is getting cooled. And you see for water I have considered cons uh, constant mass flow rate which is not exactly true, but for all practical purposes it is true. For air when air is entering so air plus water vapor that is there uh, it has got some temperature. So, uh, C p into all these things that will give the enthalpy of um, air and 
similarly for outgoing air also we can get it. So, we can make some sort of a balance <coughs> of what is happening. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, some sort of first law analysis we can do and uh, with some simplification we can get these results. I am not going det uh, into details of it because these are simple thermodynamics and you can get it. Only one thing I like to bring your attention that some amount of water vapor will get into air. So, when that is going it is bringing some amount of latent heat that H f g is coming in. Okay. So, this is very important because H f g having a uh, high value we will see this will matter much in our heat transfer. Next uh, we are what we are doing for the bulk of the or the for the total of the heat uh, cooling tower we have done first law analysis. Now, we are trying to do some sort of energy balance for a small control volume. You can see that the uh, we have taken the height of the tower uh, a small portion of the uh, cooling tower with a height d y the area is d a. What is this area? This area is nothing but the heat transfer area it is not the it is not the uh, any physical area it is the interfacial area which the air and water is having. So, for all practical purposes uh, it is very difficult if not impossible to de determine it, but in our analysis it will enter. Okay. In our analysis it will enter. So, what we can find that uh, uh, this is the amount of uh, water that is coming in M w and T w with T w temperature. Let us say it has entered with this much amount of because there will be change in the uh, water flow rate. So, higher flow rate of water is entering here and higher temperature hot hot water. So, it is higher temperature. Similarly, air this is some enthalpy and this is the change of enthalpy and this is the change of mass flow rate because some amount of evaporation is there. So, again one can do some sort of energy balance which one can do and you see basically the enthalpy change of uh, water that is equal to the enthalpy change of air water vapor mixture and by integration you can get this kind of a thing. Now, what we can do some sort of a heat transfer from the liquid at the interface uh, we can have if alpha r w is the heat transfer coefficient for water side we can get this kind of a relationship alpha w is the heat transfer coefficient of water. And you see a we have taken a we do not know a we cannot measure, but only we are thinking that at the interface area that is a and a into delta y that is for the height delta y the amount of area. So, a is the interfacial area per unit uh, volume because we can also multiply with some sort of a width of the cooling tower or we can take that it is per unit height of the cooling tower. So, with all these things we proceed and uh, then what we do similarly heat transfer from the uh, bulk to air interface for air also we get this one. Now, <coughs> vapor formed at the interface diffuse in the moist air the mass transfer process is given like this. So, rho beta is, is some sort of a mass transfer coefficient uh, beta into rho a into area that gives mass transfer coefficient uh, some sort of a bulk mass transfer coefficient, but beta we can take as if it is some sort of a mass transfer coefficient and we get this. Then we bring some sort of Lewis number because you see there is both heat transfer and mass transfer. We have to combine these two things. So, fortunately we can define one number Lewis number uh, definition has also already been given and Lewis number is equal to 1 for air water system. So, <coughs> the heat transfer coefficient for air that comes that now becomes very easy because 
we can have this kind of a relationship ok as Lewis number is equal to 1. So, this is uh, one advantage with this now we can again go for the energy balance <coughs> this is the temperature difference this is the heat transfer coefficient you see in the heat transfer coefficient the mass transfer is also there and uh, this is your uh, for air what is the enthalpy change okay, within the small control volume. Then some sort of uh, manipulation has been done and uh, HFG that is the um, enthalpy difference that has been brought in and uh, uh, the difference in the specific humidity that has also been brought in. With this finally, we can get m dot a d h a m dot a is the air flow rate d h a is the difference in enthalpy and that is equal to this mass transfer coefficient into d y into h f into h a h f is the enthalpy of the fluid h a is the enthalpy of air. Okay. What does it mean? <clears throat> it means the enthalpy increase in the air that is equal to that we are uh, equating with the uh, energy transfer um, due to basically which is due to mass transfer and uh, what will be the energy transfer due to mass transfer? HF is the enthalpy of water and HA is the enthalpy of air. So, basically from HF that means from water some amount of moisture will go to air. So, this is the enthalpy difference and this is the mass transfer coefficient and this will increase the overall enthalpy of air. So, that is why we are getting d h a. So, this has got lot of similarity if you see how the heat exchanger equations have been developed. So, it has got lots of lot of similarity. Okay. So, with that we can go to the next step and ultimately we can get an equation like this and in this equation d y that is the infinitesimal or small incremental height of the tower is coming in and then if we do this integration we can get uh, the, the uh, tower height, but for getting the tower height we have to know this quantity. This equation gives the required height of the tower. The left hand side of the equation is called Merkel integral I m and the expression on the right hand side is called the packing fraction I p. Now, I m and I p they are same all right or there is a matching. Uh, so, uh, but this is how it has to be determined. The crux of the problem lies that this is the mass transfer coefficient, this is the area which is interfacial area per unit volume as we have defined earlier and these things cannot be determined separately. See when there is a fill or there are large num number of uh, uh, droplets are formed, it is very difficult to know what is the area. So, what we do? Up to this with some sort of a simplification we can derive the equation. This is called Merkel's cooling tower equation we can derive it. Basically, I would uh, like you to follow any kind of uh, book on uh, refrigeration air conditioning where you will find this kind of derivation. Even in many, many chemical engineering mass transfer book you will get this derivation, but what can we do with this? See this quantity it is very difficult to um, design or sorry determine from the fundamental physics though nowadays people are even telling that with CFD it can be determined, but it is not easy and not whatever we determine that is not very reliable. So, the cooling tower manufacturers have got their 
tested cooling towers. The heat transfer characteristics comes from the field characteristics. So, they have got testing of different field geometry and they have got the field characteristics. Now, cooling tower um, performance that will depend on many things. What are the things it will depend on? Cooling tower performance, let us say cooling tower performance, let us say. it will depend on WBT, it will depend on approach, it will depend on the type of field we are using, it will depend on L by G ratio mainly. Okay. So, basically <coughs> the cooling tower manufacturer they have to perform a large number of experiments. Let us say they are using a typical kind of a field. Uh, so, they have to perform and feel, feel it is not only having a geometry, it is also having some sort of a dimension like uh, this is a three dimensional volume. So, how much is the width, <coughs> breadth and height? So, all these things it is having. So, feel and field geometry. Then <coughs> there are variables like WBT approach and L by G. So, with this variable they produce some sort of a curve okay? and those curves are used for heat exchanger design or based on those curve they do the design of heat exchanger. Uh, in this case the heat exchanger is nothing but your cooling tower. So, let us proceed little bit and then let us see how it is done. So, uh, so we have stopped over here and I told the right hand side uh, is very difficult to determine, left hand side is some sort of if you know the psychrometric property etcetera you can determine it uh, by some sort of numerical integration, but the right hand side is very difficult to determine because we do not have uh, idea regarding beta rho a and a uh, sorry rho a is the air density beta and a we do not have the idea. So, then what is done overall cooling tower performance or overall field performance field is the main part of the cooling tower that is the heat exchanger uh, element heat exchange element. So, that is determined by the cooling tower manufacturers for a given approach, for a given WBT, for a given L by G ratio. So, that is there and then they are doing actually it over a range of WBT, over a range of approach and over a range of L by G. So, if that is known then it has to be matched the left hand side and the right hand side is to be can be matched and then we can have the value of y that means what could be the tower height it is not the physical height of the tower it is the height of the field or packing or the heat exchange element when the uh, breadth and width of the field element are some sort of a given quantity this is how heat exchanger is designed now, as a uh, um, um, thermal engineer or as an engineer of the plant, you never have to design a heat exchanger. You cannot design it and you cannot make it unless you are working in a heat exchanger company, you are really not very much bothered regarding the design of the heat exchanger. But how the design is done to have some idea, I mean it is important to have some idea and that is why I have given this explanation and with this explanation we can go to the next slide. So, here you see uh, the previous equation has been written in a different form 
k is the mass transfer coefficient here the unit has been given h f is the enthalpy of saturated water vapor mixture at the bulk water temperature and h a is the h a is the what h a is the enthalpy of air which is unsaturated uh, and v is the a y that is tower volume per unit tower cross sectional area meter cube per meter square. Actually in different books it is given in different way as I have told still I tell the same thing left hand side can be determined easily, but the right hand side we cannot determine and we have to determine uh, depend on the uh, the supplier of the heat exchanger. So, basically <coughs> there is they uh, for a given WBT and given approach, given kind of field design, what we can do the both the left hand side and the right hand side will be a function of L by G, which is nothing but m dot w by m dot a. Okay. So, this is nothing but L by G. Uh, let me write it so that you can understand this is nothing but L by G. So, <coughs> basically what you can do suppose you have got a cooling tower that means field volume etcetera are given you are uh, design, design condition is a given W by uh, weight bulb temperature and, um, and uh, approach. So, what you get this is your Merkel's the red line is Merkel's integral what you get that is your left hand side of the equation which I was showing. And how the cooling tower volume or mass transfer coefficient plus volume uh, sorry multiplied by the volume that changes that is done experimentally. And again let us say for a weight bulb temperature and approach the cooling tower manufacturer have done this. So, cooling tower manufacturer will get some sort of a packing function left hand side is called a packing function or fill element function of the fill element. So, he will get the black curve. So, where both of these things are uh, intersecting you will get your cooling tower operating point. That means, to uh, I mean if you operate that L by G ratio, so you will get the performance of the cooling tower. Okay. So, this is how the cooling tower analysis can be done as I have told that uh, most of the design engineer cannot get much benefit out of this analysis, but it is good to know it is important to know how the cooling tower works and how this thing is done. And uh, with this almost we are towards the end of the uh, uh, thing which we wanted to design for indirect for direct contact uh, heat exchanger. Certain thing you can um, estimate uh, by the analysis which we have I which I have given. One thing let us say that you want to determine how much water will evaporate. So, uh, what we can do? We can assume we can we, we know the ambient air condition and one can assume that the water vapor will go out at almost at the saturated condition that is the best utilization of the cooling tower. Uh, out of the cooling tower. Saturated condition of what? Saturated condition at the temperature of the incoming hot water. So, if we do that then from there uh -huh. So, let us say this is a cooling tower. Uh, let me get something so let's say
So, very thin lines are coming, but let us uh, let us say this is the cooling tower. Uh, let, let me try to make it thicker. So, this will do, uh, let us say this is our cooling tower. Okay. So, this is hot water temperature, uh, hot water is coming and this is your cold water temperature, cold water is going out. So, this is ambient air. And this is air out. Now, this is your psychrometric chart so ambient air is somewhere at this condition and uh, let us rub it. ambient air is somewhere at this condition, okay, this has become red, no problem. So, <clears throat> what will happen you see uh, we have shown let us show the air and water path, hot water is coming from the hot water is coming in this direction and air ambient air is going in this direction. So, initially you see the air will come in contact with the cold water because hot water as it is falling towards the downward direction it is cold water. And uh, let us say this is your ambient air temperature and hot water temperature is more than that. So, hot water temperature is somewhere here. So, the air path will be something like this. This is very interesting. Initially, air may get cooled. Air may get cooled, air will take energy from the uh, water, but even then it may get cooled. Why? Because some amount of moisture is coming, latent heat is coming, but there is no sensible heating, so air may get cooled. But ultimately, air will come out almost close to the hot water temperature and in the saturated condition. So, you see air enthalpy will change this much, this is the air enthalpy change. So, this is actually higher enthalpy. So, let us say if it is H A out and this is H A in, so H A out is greater than H A in and by that process the water temperature will also reduce because the water temperature, cold water temperature will be somewhere over here and the hot water temperature is somewhere over here. So, this much of change in temperature we will get. So, this is a complex process, please try to imagine how it happens on a psychrometric plane. These things cannot be explained uh, to a very great detail in a heat course of heat exchanger. But I uh, expected to give, I uh, attempted to give you some glimpse of how a cooling tower works. I have not given much uh, attention for the uh, very uh, methodical derivation of the cooling tower equation, which is there in many textbooks. You can pick it up. But you have to understand one thing that how the energy exchange is taking place in this kind of direct contact heat exchanger which is cooling tower, uh, both sensible and latent heat transfer is taking place. And uh, the latent heat transfer actually plays a very important role, sensible heat transfer is not that important and by this latent heat transfer we are having the maximum amount of heat exchange. That is why in a cooling tower there is only little bit of evaporation loss. 
less than 3 percent or around 3 percent of the circulating water, but we can cool the water to a very great extent. So, cooling tower is not only a heat exchanger, it is also a water conservation device. And in big power plant, we only sacrifice 3 percent of the circulating water and get a great amount of cooling. Ultimately, cooling tower is the device where the heat due to second law or according to the second law, heat has to be dumped in the atmosphere and that is how heat is being dumped and ultimately it is being dumped in the cooling tower with the help of the cooling tower. With these few words, I end my lecture and thank you for your kind attention.